Buck, who died on board a cruise ship hit by a vomiting virus, has been named. More than 300 passengers on the Marco Polo, which is berthed off Scotland, are suffering from the bug. Roy Sillett from Cossey near Norwich apparently suffered a heart attack, but an autopsy is still to be carried out. Two paramedics have been disciplined after a man was pronounced dead when he was still alive. His body had been covered at the scene of a crash in Norfolk, but a colleague noticed later the man was still breathing. It was here on the busy A140 at Newton Flotman near Norwich that a young Polish man crashed last December. He suffered what were described as overwhelming injuries. Artur Palkimovic was riding a motorbike and collided with a lorry. The ambulance happened to be behind the lorry, so the paramedics were right on the scene of the accident. But instead of testing the man with a heart monitor, they visually assessed that he was dead and covered the body. It was only when a backup ambulance crew arrived that they realised, in fact, he was breathing and still alive. This was a fundamental error. Uh, they are all trained on recognising life extinct uh, and they failed to follow trust procedure. What would you say to the man's family? I would just extend our heartfelt sympathy on his death. It was a tragic circumstance, whatever the reasons behind it, and we can only apologise uh, for the lack of care on scene. Artur Palkimovic died a few hours later in hospital on December the 22nd. An inquest heard he had no chance of survival. The week before, he'd been released from Helsden Psychiatric Hospital in Norwich. The coroner said it was likely he wanted to kill himself. The two paramedics, David Dixon and Andrew Took, were immediately suspended and given a written warning. They're due before the Health Professionals Council and have just returned to work under supervision. If they make another mistake, they'll be sacked. Ian Barmer, BBC Look East, Norwich. People have gathered in the centre of Norwich to watch the memorial service for Michael Jackson. Earlier this evening, his family held a private funeral at Forest Lawn Cemetery in Los Angeles. Dawn Gerber is at the city's big screen where the memorial is being shown. Dawn. Hi, yes, I'm here at the big screen at Chapel Field in Norwich. And as you can see, that's Mariah Carey just finishing off singing there for the memorial service of Michael Jackson. And it's taking place in L.A. at the Staples Centre. And fans have gathered. We're going to go over here to Catherine. You're a huge fan. You actually set up a Facebook page for people to come down. Yes, I did. Yes. Unfortunately, nobody did turn up. I think we had uh, just not enough notice, really. And what is it about Michael Jackson that appeals to you? Why are you such a huge fan? I have no idea. He just had a certain magic, something about him, something about the way he sings, the way he dances, everything about him. And you actually had tickets to go and see him? Yes, I did. I was going to see him in three weeks. Brilliant. And, and also, Zane here, you've set up um, a book of condolences which was outside the forum. What kind of messages have people been saying? Um, all sorts, really. Very emotional messages. Um, they've been, it's been surprising, really, how many different types of people that actually come and love Michael Jackson. Um, it's just been overwhelming, really. A lot of people very emotional and um, distraught. You know, it's been such a sudden thing, really. It's Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks. As we can see, a few more fans here. Uh, it is on until around half seven, so you can come along and see it all on the big screen here. Dawn, thank you. Administrators who've been brought in to run a haulage company when it collapsed say they hope the jobs of staff can be saved. Leggett's Transport, which is based near Bury St Edmunds, is a victim of the recession. The administrators say it will continue trading while talks continue with a potential buyer. It looks likely the flood sirens along the coast of Norfolk will be scrapped despite strong opposition. A report to be presented to the County Council next week say the sirens are unreliable.